All right, we're live everywhere. What's up, poker people? This is Fun Champion in the house. Today we are doing day 20 of 66 day hand reading series. So let's get this one started right away. Uh, looks interesting. I just had a quick sneak peek <laughs> on this one. And um, it looks like I we're like doing, doing the heap, especially when it's in the big blind or small oh, blind. Oops, when my range is. are a bit bigger for calling two bets and stuff so we're going to go in and take a look through we have it sorted just like we did yesterday by river action lots of these checks some check calling hands we saw some check calling yesterday i think it was checks checks i mean you can imagine because i'm out of the blinds i'm out of position most likely right. in most of these hands i'm just doing a ton of checking playing stuff pretty darn passively i don't see too much um aggressive stuff check bet bet check that might be an interesting one uh, oh, this was the hand from yesterday. Check, raise, check, call. Those are some cool some cool actions to kind of narrow myself down. Uh, checks, checks, check, raise, bet. Bet, call, bet. Oh, look at that. Double check, raise. That's interesting. This will be the hand. Let's do it. I like Let's it. Double. Do it. I don't often double check, raise. I mean, Let's go. most likely it's a really good hand or a really good bluffing spot, you know. Um, so July 1st is our hero's hand. Uh, I'll just I'll look up the date later. Eight seven eight three nine six seven five. That's me, a wacky one right here, and I just call. Okay, so my cue bell is in a steel position, uh, in you know on the button steel position. I've only got thirty four hands on the guy. His steel percentage as a total is thirty three, one hundred percent on the button. It's really huh. not enough. I mean, what is it? What? It's one out of one because it's only 34 hands. We, we've got to put him on a decent steel range right here. We're not ranging him, of course, but let's we could think about his range at least. Most 33 would mean, uh, and if he's doing 100% of uh, steals from the button, uh, and we have like 33 hands on them, then uh, probably it's a decent amount of orbits that they have already tried to steal or made a steal. It's likely he has somewhere between a 30 and a 40% range, somewhere in there for his stealing. Um, it is 85 cents, so I've got the feeling that it just feels a little bit bigger. So he probably wants us to fold. So let's say he's got a hand like, we'll just give him pocket eights right here. Um, because it feels like the hand that, you know, you want to steal. Great, if everyone folds, I only had pocket eights. At least I won the blind. And if they it call, falls. you have the chance to hit a set, uh, flop an open ender on a 679 board, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at our two bet calling ranges here. Uh, 20 oh, these ranges and uh, this uh, format of putting those ranges in uh, Flopsilla actually has me, uh, you know, hooked right now i am trying to do the same uh in a different way a little bit different way uh let's see if i can manage that otherwise uh flopzilla it is uh but this is very interesting uh just take a look at uh, his uh, construction range construction here two bit ranges and then there's calling two bit ranges so somebody open raises so two bit is basically just rfi somebody raises first 10 and not just uh, limbs so uh, they two bet and we call that two bet that is we are probably in position uh, if we are button or worse in position or we are out of position obviously if we are calling from the small blind or the big blind uh, these calling ranges are again split into five percent eight percent 13 17 and as you can see 22 up to 51 which means uh, we can decide if we want to call a tight player with a wider range or a wide or a loose player with a slightly tighter range than their opening range like for example if uh, somebody is opening 33 percent uh you know their, their vp is 33 percent if you want to target a little bit tighter than that 22 or 26 uh, that's our choice we can always include and exclude combos <laughs> himanshu welcome welcome uh, to the study session, not many of you guys are joining in the study session, but never mind. I guess you guys uh, are studying offline uh, anyways. Uh, so uh, let's continue this exercise. So I was talking about these ranges that uh, uh, Sky uh, has constructed and uh, the way we would like to use them. There's also 3-bit ranges, 3-bit call ranges and 4-bit ranges. Uh, there's also suited calling range and a few more ranges uh, you know 
uh, that he has put in. But this is very interesting. 5, 8, 13, 17, uh, 22, 26, 33, and 51 are the calling ranges. Uh, so I understand that we all do that. All these hands which are not included in the calling range are obviously still in our playing range, but uh, they are just uh, going to 3-bet and not just call a 2-bet uh, most of the time or all of the time. All right, let's move 26 on. 26%. Now, this guy looks to be a, a bit loose aggressive, but it is only 34 hands. So what am I calling? So far, it looks like I'm playing pretty tight at this table, over 33 hands. Maybe I'm not getting dealt good cards. Maybe I'm in kind of a, a nitty mood, a nitty uh, state of mind right now, whatever the case <laughs> is. So let's go with a decently wide calling range. This feels good. I think I would be three-betting right. tens. Like I said yesterday, tens are often my threshold for... Um, uh, for three betting in the blinds nines i'm often just calling but tens i can three bet here um i like the call i like the call uh king queen suited i can a three bet but uh, but oftentimes i will just call as well um i definitely like three bets with the ace king ace queen suited i like three betting as well ace jack well i'll sometimes call with the ace queen suited so we'll put that in this time we'll probably end up narrowing or uh yeah narrowing that out of our range I shouldn't say probably. Who knows what will happen here. I'm calling, calling. I like all these as calls. Sometimes 5-4 suited. Sometimes 6-5 will be the, the lowest I'll go. Actually, no, let's not put the 5-4 suited in because it's 85 cents. He's betting a little bit bigger here. So now that I actually think about that, um, let's take that out. I'll probably call here at 85 cents. Um, probably not call that. All right, that's also interesting. Uh, now what essentially uh, Sky is doing is shaving off a few combos from our range uh, which would not be profitable defend uh, when the race size is more than 3x so uh, the it is 25 cents and ideally it would be 75 but if they are making it 85 that's slightly more than 3x so uh, the defending range uh, that is being used uh, Uh, oh yeah last night's contest i'll uh i'll put up the winner's list on the <laughs> ippa page eric <laughs> all right so like i was saying uh the winning uh sorry <laughs> the combos that uh would be shaved off uh i'll i'll put the list on uh ippa page uh, for transparency and clarity purposes so people will know um all right and it makes sense uh would you exclude more suited combos more uh broadway and nine minus uh kind of hands or would you rather exclude off suit combos which have uh, king nine queen nine or uh, you know king 10 queen 10 uh combos like that or even ace eight off would you exclude that first or would you exclude these combos first is uh quite a nice uh, you know uh quite a nice uh, thing to look at probably not call that um probably not calling all the kings all right that's what i was talking about uh not calling all the kings which means uh essentially we are not calling king with a worse kicker so that uh, is in case we hit a king on the flop and we have a really bad kicker like 7 or 6 or 5, uh, we are practically losing to, <coughs> so sorry, practically losing to all sorts of kings uh, that he would open uh, slightly bigger with. Um, also, that helps us condense our range uh, significantly broadway heavy which means we can uh, more often than not uh, dominate what they are holding and also we stand uh, stand a better chance of hitting the flop as in my park welcome to the stream mate uh, we stand a better chance to uh, hit the flop uh, as in uh, make straights as well as uh, good top pairs decent kickers or just have decent showdown value with uh, you know better ace x's and uh better king x's ace eight not calling those bad boys not calling ace nine not ten nine i can call yeah see that that's what i was talking about 
So lots of king x's are out of the range and also ace nine off and king nine queen nine off are out of the range. It, it is also interesting to see how many offsuit combos uh, sky chooses to retain and how many offsuit combos I choose to retain versus a bigger raise. Cash or tournament review? This is cash review, but then again, uh, you know, uh, it's not really so different when you consider that we all have uh, 100 bigs or whatever, 80 plus bigs pretty much similar uh tournament would probably uh, you know uh, differ just a little bit but the process is more important and how we think of combos is uh, far more important than uh, which combos essentially you know you might just uh, uh, keep in uh, tournaments or just uh, not keep in cash or vice versa uh yeah like i said we are more interested in the thought process so all right ace nine of is uh, 8 off, uh, 10, 9 off is anyway not in my range. And uh, like I said, I'm not including all of these. Probably just these. That's that's all I am. Uh, yeah. Mm, okay. Probably excluding a few more hands from my range. Jack 9, Jack 8 still has a uh, nice playability. Um... 10 8 yeah this this range is uh, good in my opinion 18 percent probably on the tighter side uh, but good enough uh, to play against a button open out of position uh, so we need that much uh, that much edge if we can have it all right and probably i don't know all pocket pairs are calling but i i really don't uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of calling and folding versus the seabed when we especially open uh, baby pairs like that, especially when we're out of position, that is. All right, I'll still apply and okay and close this. Ace nine, I would most likely fold in this instance if I didn't want to three bet it. Um Tournaments have wider calling ranges because of anties and no like, yeah, yeah, essentially. I mean, uh, argument can be made that uh, some cash games are, uh, you know, the field is uh, such that uh, you would be incentivized to do that, but at the same time, sometimes uh, there is some consideration of anties. Uh, no rake, though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, essentially, what we are trying to look at is uh, the thought process that you know uh, we should be following in uh, most instances. As in, I would rather keep uh, suited connectors or suited gappers versus uh, versus something like uh, king nine off, which is less likely to flop a flush, less likely to flop a uh, uh, straight as well. I mean, it's a three gapper. So we would essentially need, uh, you know, three cards in line to make a straight uh, with with our edges uh, wrapped in. Um, Let's go. Ace queen, ace queen, ace jack. Yeah, I'm good here. So this is my calling range. Let's take this off so we get a true count of our pre-flop combos. 280 combos at a 21%. All right. And we are a couple of pips tighter here with 18.4%. Okay. 21%. 280 combos. Pretty decent sized range right here. Uh, and then you can see it's just... I just had to take out a lot of those hands because I realized that he made it bigger, which is going to constrict my range a little bit here. So we'll give him those eights again. Um, currently, if he does have that middle pair, uh, he actually is a favorite. 59 to my, we could just say, yeah, 59 to my 41% equity right now. So this is interesting. We don't know that. Uh, another interesting aspect is when we are slightly, we have slightly more edge in terms of uh, equity as well like in sky's case eights have uh, 59 versus uh, in our case uh, eights only have 57 percent so that's another incentive to play slightly tighter than that and at the same time carry some advantage agreed we'll be playing lesser hands and defending uh, less in the big blind if uh, that's the case but uh, hey we want to defend with good hands and probably take pots down post so uh, it's always a trade-off between how many hands you are defending and uh, how well uh, you know uh, you stack up versus opponent's range that's what he has but we'll just put him on that middle pocket pair that wants to push us off 
So on the flop, uh, ace, king, four, heart, right. spade, heart. Nice flop. All right, so on this board, um, obviously, if he has the eights, it's just not really a good hand or a good, good board hand, for him, hand. for sure. But on this board, you can see with our range here, with a ton of aces, suited aces, um, we have top pair or better, open into straight draw better, and the combo draws 34% of the time. So 34% of the time, we like this flop. Uh, we want to continue in. Uh, you see, you guys, uh, if you don't have uh, Flopzilla as of now and you still want to look at that, uh, kind of uh, dynamics you can still do a couple of things uh, I can suggest a few that is you can take this range copy and probably paste it somewhere else and go and edit that range like we want to look at where we have the top pair that is all ace x's uh, all second pairs like king x's let's say that and we can just you know remove all of these And voila, we have uh, the amount of combos that actually uh, smash the flop well in terms of either top pair uh, or smashing. Uh, there's no flash draw, however, in ace queen or all of this ace x suited because ace of hearts is already there on the board. So it could be king x, like all these uh, king queen, king jack, king 10, king 9, king 8 suited. All of these suited kings could easily uh, be king x of hearts so that makes it a brilliant brilliant combination uh, we have a second pair we are uh, uh, you know we have all the incentive to go and charge at the flush draw at this an ace jack off an ace 10 off could uh, easily have uh, jack or 10 or of our variety <laughs> So we have about uh, 60 combos or 5.10% of the range of the form to uh, represent a solid hand with us as compared to, so this is the interesting aspect, 215 hands or 18% of hands. Uh, that's super interesting, 60 and uh, 215. So a good amount of uh, our hands are in fact uh, king x's uh, likely flush draws top pair second pair decent kicker in this hand with, with a lot of our range and as we know already so that's pretty interesting oh i wasn't showing my screen okay cool so uh, what i'm saying is we just uh, copy this in and as we paste it uh, let me show the process once so that it's recorded all right And uh, what we do to check uh, ace x's and all the uh, good combos is this is range 78 combos uh, that we are looking at. Cool is that? Super cool, right? Uh, okay, now this is what I was talking about. 60 combos out of uh, the entire 215 combos are really nice and would love to continue a little bit. Oh, all right, we have some network issues. Let's see if it catches up. Hands and we have ace x's, king x's as 60 combos out of the entire 215 combos that we called with. So our calling range uh, has good portion of significantly strong hands. We can Interesting. Continue. Let's see what his sizing is before we check raise because what if he's tossing out like a tiny little too big blind bet? We might be check raising just as a straight bluff. So let's see what his sizing is. And remember, or not remember, but look, I've got a full stack behind. So right. if I hit a killer hand, uh, a check raise is a great way to start building the pot early in hopes of getting all of it in. All right. I check, he bets. Okay, that's Cross kind of a standard it. C bet half pot. Could be a bluff, uh, could be a blocking bet with any kind of draw. Could be just a king, could be pocket eights, just trying to get us to fold. And then we come in for a min check raise. Now, just that, totally feels, that totally feels like value for me. Value, Oftentimes yeah. when I'm bluffing, I'll be making it like two. Uh, check raises where we, uh, you know, might be on a draw or not 
uh, really sure if we have the best hand and if we are attacking their standard c bets uh, we are gonna check raise big because always bigger sizing is polar smaller sizing is for more frequent bets and uh, probably a lot more value bets two and a half x so i would expect myself to be making it 225 to 250 somewhere in that range right here as a bluff to get him to fold um because as you know bigger bet sizes make people fold a little bit more often smaller sizes get them to call at this sizing, he only he needs 17% equity to make the call. Any so cuts. he really can call with any ace, any king. He can call with a couple of hearts easily with any flush draw. Um, especially if he has something like queen jack of hearts with a gut mm. shot plus a flush draw. He's totally calling here. Um, mm. So I think that this is not, honestly, this is not getting anything to fold. Mm. Um so all their betting I guess pocket eights might fold. Yeah, so things that completely whiff this, that doesn't have a heart, um, a weak third pair, weak undercards, like a like a 7-8 offsuit or 7-8 suited even of clubs, um, that kind of thing could fold here to this min raise. But right. most likely, I'm making this min raise for value. I want him to call or maybe even come over the top at this point. So he does just call. So what hand... That dog is barking at Sky's end. <laughs> Our dogs are... Fortunately, not <laughs> into a fight with each other. Hands make this. Uh, they tried to kill each other earlier this morning, so now they're resting. Uh, what I'm considering to be a value min raise at this point. Uh, let's see here. Well, we'll start up top. Sets. Sets are totally making this. Two pairs. What are the two pairs? Only ace four. That's right, because I don't have ace king, because I would have three bet free flop. Yep, I think sets can do it. Top pair hands. Uh, I think all of those could currently. If he does have pocket eights and wants to continue, all of my weak and stronger aces, they're all getting value out of him. All getting value out of kings, even king queen with like a, um, let's say he has king queen of hearts. He has a flush draw plus a backdoor straight draw plus a second pair. He could totally call here and give me value with my ace, with my top pair hands. Mm. So I could be doing that. Middle pairs now, these various that kings. That is interesting. I don't think I'd be check raising here. I think I'd be check calling with the middle pairs. Weak pairs, not check raising. All right. So, so now note that this uh, set of middle pairs or king queens and king jacks and king tens, all these kings uh, Sky is talking about, they are essentially just middle pairs and not flush draw. So king queen of hearts is actually included a, here in this 7 point whatever 4%. All right no made hand not check raising flush draws i do like the check raise with the flush draw um it does feel so you can see uh i don't know if you can see there's a small uh, reddish uh, uh, color over here spatter and that is actually a heart in uh, in the deck so all these are heart uh, suited combos feel it's on the smaller size, right? It, or side. Yeah, smaller side. It's a min check raise. I would normally make those bigger with a flush draw, but I can I can see myself doing it on one street. So let's keep those in for now. Um, oh, gut yeah. shots, check raising. I could for... Mm, yeah, actually I could. I'll keep those in as well. Two card, no, not those. And these combos will keep those in as well. So you could see that I'm pretty darn heavy uh for value and then i do have some decent draws that i could be check raising with sure. right here so if we say that this is my range 54 percent of my flop range so 54 percent mm -hmm. of the 280 hands continued in this instance 423 combos interesting sorry you probably hear my dog barking in the background <laughs> i just talked about the doggo all right, we're so in sync cool with the studies and everything. Yep, look at, wait, did I, did I copy that right? <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, I'm just, but I guess it kind of just goes down sets. There's my top pair hands. My two pair is somewhere, ace four. It's listed somewhere here. Uh, so you see, um, what I am uh, observing as a pattern is, we are definitely uh, playing with our strong hands out of position and we want to get more money in the pot right away. Uh, 
again i'm not sure how most of these hands would react to a re-raise or you know uh something that is uh, beyond aggressive would a flush draw be happy with the re-raise what part of flush draws would be happy with the re-raise that's an interesting interesting question to look at all right how many flush uh, combos are there essentially let's let's look at that as well all right can we have a one note pop up no no not unless we close it just give me a sec guys that's how it works one note incoming what what is happening what is all right here it is <laughs> all right all right uh so day 20 that's uh what is that is that an action item or take away it's an action item to find out what happens all right we let's write in our beautiful handwriting now we are addicted to writing as well all right uh, what is this day 20 all right so on the flop <clears throat> what uh, suited Hard combos actually you know what it's uh, suited hard combos what is uh, <clears throat> what uh Sorry, this is too much fun. What are we doing with if they okay three bet? So essentially, uh yeah, not flush draws. Probably not thrilled to make that call, but uh, I don't know. Like what? Until what SPR? Uh, like, what are we doing if they three bet? If uh, all right, let's say three bet sizing is min three bet. All right, you know what? Let me look at the uh, board. SPR, yeah. Let's let's look at that. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Um, that so essentially, right now, if they min click, one point eight becomes uh, three point. 18 to the 36, right? Not wrong, right? Okay. 3.6, uh, 3.6. So, I don't think you can see the calculator. 3.6 plus 1.8 in the flop, uh, in the pot. What am I talking about? All right. And divided by. Uh, our stack is uh, shorter than theirs, so we reduce 1.8 from ours. 20, 20, 
3, 22.6. So, we are 22 by 4. What? 5.4. So SPR is 4 over there in that case. Uh, if they, let's say uh, 2.5x or 3x, three bet. let's say they have, uh, you know, some set of some kind and they want to, you know, put in more money in the pot right away. What are we doing then? So what happens is essentially uh, 1.8 into 3, that is 5.4. So they make it 5.4, all right? And we have to put in 5.4 as well. Ah, what do we do? Uh, Five point four. First of all, let's calculate the pot size. Five point four into two becomes uh, ten point eight plus one point eight. It's called to twelve point six. So twelve point six is the pot, and how much we have behind is three point six nineteen something. Yeah, so 19, uh, the pot effectively becomes 1.x, 1 to 2 SPR. So uh, even if they don't make it uh, completely uh, 3x, 3 bet, so probably a little bit 2.8 or something like that, kind of for 3 bet, uh, SPR on the flop uh, becomes 1.5. About 1.5 okay plus or minus so uh, what are we going to do with a flush draw or suited combos uh, with hearts in them or even if we have just a top pair are we happy uh, calling in that case okay in addition to what suited combos are doing Plus, uh, what are we doing with ace? Uh, what is it? Ace ten, ace nine, ace eight. Yeah, ace eight plus. The weaker combos, I don't think uh, they are thrilled to get the money in, but I'm more interested in knowing uh, what are we doing with a 7 ish uh, plus, a 7 suited plus. Also, what are we doing with a jack or a 10 of plus? All right, that's very, very interesting. Non two pair hands, and uh, yeah, all of these action items, by the way, we need to uh, think about these, talk about these, and probably get uh, some input on these because this is uh, this is the trigger that I'm looking for in an exercise like this. Uh, as we are, you know, picking up some cues on what range they could have at the same time we are also looking continuously looking at the SPR and also trying to look at um, what hand is good enough uh, with this SPR and at the same time the action that we are doing on the flop uh, with the bets is also actually building up the pot like that and uh, making the SPR uh, you know something that is uh, 4 or 1.5 in this case so uh, I mean, we cannot say just because the SPR is now 1.5, top pair is good enough. Uh, we have built it like that. 
And if we don't want to build it like that, we'll probably have to go back and uh, correct some of our action so that the pod stays small, probably uh, check call more or at least uh, consider check raising uh, on the turn more uh, to keep the pot slightly on the smaller side unless we are sure of getting our money in. All right, that's that's interesting, uh, you know, take away here, let's continue. That kind of thing could fold here to this min raise, but most likely I'm making this min raise for value. I want him to call or maybe. That's exactly what I was talking about. We are making it for value. Uh, I'm interested to know what hands we are putting in value and what are on the brink of, uh, you know, uh, value semi bluff or something like that. Even come over the top at this point. So he does just call. Mm. So what hands make this, uh, what I'm considering to be a value min raise at this point? Uh, let's see here. Well, we'll start up top. Sets, sets are totally making this. Two pairs, what are the two pairs? Only ace four, that's right, because I don't have ace king because I would have three bet free flop. Yep, I think sets can do it. Top pair hands, uh, I think all of those could currently. If he does have pocket eights and wants to continue, all of my weak and stronger aces, they're all getting value out of him. All getting value out of kings, even king queen with like a, um, let's say he has king queen of hearts, he has a flush draw plus a backdoor straight draw plus a second pair. He could totally call here and give me value with my ace, with my top pair hands so i could be doing that middle pairs now these various kings i don't think i'd be check raising here i think i'd be check calling with the middle pairs okay, weak pairs not check raising all right currently we're 50 50 betting for value or a bluff let's see what happens and as we know he just called 540 and interesting on the six of clubs so on the six of clubs right here um Really, I mean, we still have, Not we have a, we're have a 62% favorite if he does have that middle pair because we have plenty of kings, plenty of aces in our range. Um, we actually have pocket nines in our range still that beats him currently. And we've got lots of nice heart draws and stuff in there. Yeah, so things are looking good. Um, let's see what happens. What does he bet? Last time he bet half pot and we min raised. Half pot again. Oh, wow. So is that a blocking bet or is he like going for some weird value you know, it's either a blocking bet or he's got like a weak ace or a weak king and he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. It feels to me, I mean, we check raised. Half pot bet. Unless no, now he's suddenly, maybe he has trips this whole time and is just slow playing us <laughs> on a flop and now he's going to get aggressive. No trips are set. There's no so trips. With a really bet late. and then a three bet. I mean, that kind of thing is possible. But as we saw when we looked at the, hand histories in poker tracker four we saw that it just goes check raise check raise not check raise call or check raise raise again kind of thing so i know he's just going to call here um what is he what is he betting it's got to be some kind of an ace right he's got a top pair and he thinks sure. we're bluffing with a flush draw on two streets so he bets again to charge us so we don't see a free river flush but we check raise which means we have a great hand i don't know why he's calling right here Unless he's got like a pair plus a flush draw, king, queen of hearts, king, jack of hearts. Um, no aces have good draws, right? Mm -mm, no aces have draws, so that seems like a weak hand to be betting in. Oh, that's interesting. Ace will have top pair, but ace will not have a draw. So ace x will obviously charge all the draws. What should look like a big price to pay, wrong price to pay for the draws and for that it has to be beyond 60 percent kind of a bet at the least hmm interesting and calling um unless he has ace queen ace jack with a top pair decent kick uh aces kings and sixes maybe uh yeah sure why not and they are also happy to see the check raise. So they will be making those small bets to see how much we raise. That's a very good point, Piyush. I guess that's possible. Sure. All right. So what are we check raising on a second street right here against this player who apparently doesn't doesn't seem to know what he's doing? Doesn't feel like it, at least. Probably. Um, I guess unless he just put us on a bluff and wanted to... Uh, Call it down. A bluff check raise on the flop, and he wants to charge us so we don't see the free river. That could be the case. Sorry, but if that is down. the case, why bet just half pot again? 
your half pot two times in a row just smells like weakness. You should have upped that turn bet if you wanted me to fold uh, and didn't want to face another check raise. Because look at that. Yeah, and then Piyush has a point. They don't want us to fold. They want us to go crazy or they know that we have a decent hand and we might just check raise again. That could be a strategy. I mean, we can always assume our opponent is a donkey, but uh, what if they are not and we are the donkey? That. He's making my check raise. For thinking even though that they are the donkey. Oh, it is just a min raise. He's making it uh, pretty easy for me to make right there. Uh, it's just it's just a really small check raise. If he would have bet two thirds or three quarter pot, my check raise would have to be much more expensive, be a bigger part of my of my stack. Mm. And as you can see, with just the sizing, I have almost a stack to pot ratio of one on the river. Uh, so yep. what am I check raising with again? Uh, there's no straight. Oh yeah, no straights of course. And he sets in my range, still just the fours. I'm totally check raising those again. I love it. Two pairs. Base 4A6, yeah, those are in my calling range pre. I can totally be doing that. Top pair hands. Um, you know, Not I don't all. like a second check raise with all of these. Definitely mm. not. Ace-10, no. Ace-jack, maybe ace-jack. Ace-queen off. Yeah, I could see ace-queen off suit. Ace, so if I can do it off suit, I'm doing it suited as well. Ace-10 suited. I don't see any reason. Um, I can't have the ace-10, the nut flush draw, um, because, you know, the ace of hearts is out there so i don't think definitely not these weak kicker ones i'd be i would just be check calling with these i can see myself check raising the flop check calling the turn ace 10 suited would i check raise here um Take it time. ace it's one two third best kicker not a two pair but i mean third best single card kicker ace queen ace jack ace 10 um, I don't think I don't think I'd be check raising a second time with Ace Ten. No, uh, uh. Let's do that. So we're gonna narrow those top pairs down just a little bit. Not as many combos in the range anymore. Um, mid pairs definitely not check raising. Flush draw. I don't think I would check raise another a flush draw on another street. And like I said before, if I did, I'd be making it bigger. Two X just or a min raise. Two X isn't enough. Two point five or two point seven five or even three X is much better. So I'm really, I'm going to take away the draws and basically I have top pair or better for the second check raise right here. And maybe that's a leak. Maybe I need to be able to check raise my flush draws Sweet and draws. open enders and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just too value oriented, especially against a player like this. Only 34 hands, but he's loose passive. I should be going more. So this is the point where most of us uh, take the junction as in either be value heavy on the turns or... Uh, you know, decide that this needs to be a proper, proper bluff. And we go big on the turn. We pot it on the turn. We often uh, go like 60% plus, probably sometimes 90%, sometimes over pot the turn. And we expect uh, folds or hero calls with, uh, with worse hands. So that is interesting uh, in terms of how much. How much value to bluff ratio we carry on the turn? I'm going to keep a note on that uh, because that is very, very interesting. If we are not balanced all the time, we are getting too many folds. If people know we are just uh, raising, uh, you know, big on the turn, always uh, we are going to get calls some of the times. But if we just uh, occasionally raise like 60%-ish on the turn, we are for sure uh, going to get a lot of folds and going to miss a uh, shitload of value uh, in cases where we are actually, uh, you know, leading in equity uh, or probably have flopped, you know, even the nuts. So probably keeping a standard turn size uh, also makes sense, which means, which means uh, they go through and also have a range where we would like to go a little bit polar in terms of... Uh, in terms of bluffs that we hold on uh, on the turn. More for value than I should be um, uh, bluffing players like this. So, wow, look at that range. Only 32. <laughs> and all of them are Only 32, are uh, what you call them? 32 combos of hands right here. 26% uh, of our Pretty flop range. Premium hands. Wow. We are narrowing ourselves big time. 280 to 32 so we've taken away almost 90 percent of our hands up to this point 
That is great. And that's what's going to happen probably for all of you watching too. I mean, a double check raise means you're totally going for value against a guy that you think can call. That's really how I view the situation, double check raising. Um, oh. Ten of diamonds here. Hits. Yep, ten of diamonds. And what does that do? Well, those check raises. for our range, of course, because we had all top pair Double. hands or better, of course, we beat fourth pocket pair right now. So this, he's not calling check raising. I'm sorry. He's, he's not, not playing this betting way and then calling a check raise on the flop and turn with this. So, But I don't want to change this now because if I did, it would mess up with all our combos and stuff. So we'll just keep <laughs> him on pocket eights. Now, oh, the yeah. ten hits. Um, Let's see. At this point... He could have been calling with every ace. Um, he does have ace-king in his range, but not for just bet calling on the turn. I think if he had ace-king, he would be betting and then three betting us for value with top two on the turn. Now, it's possible that he hit a second pair on this river. Um, I check-raised twice. I think he will be a little bit cautious, even if he has a 10 or ace-10 here or even king-10 for two pair. I think he'll be checking behind quite often. Um, if I bet, if I have ace four, let's say I have ace four two pair, what is calling me? What is calling a third street? It seems like only, man, it seems if I value bet like a two pair hand or better here, I'm only getting called by something better, right? I'm only getting called by ace king, a set of aces, a set of kings. They'd be actually raising at this point. Yeah. I think betting for value is, I check. So the fact that I did not bet for value, we can probably take sets out of our range here. Yeah. We can probably keep these in as willing to check call in case he does have an ace king he's slow playing or an ace 10 that just hit on the river. I think we can, I think, and there's only five combos of that. I think we're check calling and I think we're check calling here. I don't think any of those. True. I don't think any of those deserve a value bet on the river. We already I'm have with... gotten some decent value over the flop and the turn with those check raises. I would uh, probably not go for uh, not go for last street. Uh, Queen Jack of Hearts gets to the river. Um, oh yeah, it does. But that's just one combo, and probably a small part of uh, our opponent's range because I think we have uh, excluded that. Queen Jack. Oh, no, Queen Jack suited is there. But that is just one combo. So that. So I just took away three sets from our range. So we're at 29 combos right here. And he said he's not going to check raise uh, a queen high flush draw uh, on uh, the... What do you call it? On the turn. So, let's see. That's yeah, guys. We're uh, right. Oh, so we checked and then... Wait, so, yeah, we check, he checks behind. So what do we got? Ace-queen offsuit. Is that in our range? It was, right? Top pair hand? Yep, nice. top pair. Ace-queen offsuit. Queen kicker. So uh, the best kicker, the best non-two pair kicker uh, with the queen right there. Makes sense. What does he have? I hope we won this hand. Ace three suited, top pair, weak kicker. All right, that's insane. Calling two check raises. Maybe he just thinks we're we're Full capable of, of bluffing on two streets with a couple oh, of hearts. Have a draw. Or a gut shot or a weak king. Yeah. yeah, so he probably puts us on a bluff and he just thinks his top pair is good on two streets. So this is interesting. Um we gotta <laughs> make a note on this guy. Whoops. For this. Cash game. Capable of uh, bet I've call started on using flop this turn, technology. top pair, weak kicker. Go for max value with top pair plus hands. So far, I mean, you could see it. All right, somebody uh, does that uh, kind of an action that is the uh, just, you know, uh, call or bet and uh, call those check raises and then uh, at showdown they show something that is marginal so either it translates into two things uh, for me one is uh, that probably <laughs> one is probably that they are a non-believer they don't think that we have an ace they just think we are on a draw probably a flush draw because then it's very evident on the uh, flop 
could very easily uh, not have an ace probably a king or something king x of uh, hearts heart and uh, that's not good enough uh, especially with this ace x ace 3 is obviously uh, 3 is as irrelevant as anything else uh, but but also at some point of time you have to think uh, if you're getting check raised uh, even on the turn it's got to be not the best thing uh, to call with in my opinion so it's just if they have made up their mind that we don't have an ace on the flop uh, they continue to think the same way on the river like they don't analyze hands uh, like we are learning or trying to learn to implement in our game if they're not doing it they are doing this versus if we are looking at what does a second check raise mean uh, you know if we can make uh, some exploitative folds even if we have the top pair probably not an exploitative fold at that point of time we are actively reducing SPR so at this stage I'd like to point out that we almost made the SPR uh, you know uh, one or two one does this merit uh, i mean uh, does this uh, now you know build the logic that the spr is close to one so top pair is good enough and they could have jammed that's another point i'm uh, you know uh, thinking about so the spr alone is not something that we want to look at how we are you know making that spr go from whatever it is uh, pre-flop to the river that is also something uh, you know of um, a key area of interest for me at this point i only have 34 hands on the guy but i think if he's willing to call now that i see his hand and he bet called twice i bet if i made a five dollar bet if i made an eight dollar bet just a half pot he's calling with his ace if yeah. i make a bet that looks like i'm trying to bluff he's calling so i probably did miss out on value here um <laughs> I would think so. But at the time, he bet two different streets. I mean, that feels like he might have a two pair. Yeah. I mean, ace. with ace three, they could easily have ace four, ace six as well. Uh, as easily as that. And with a suited uh, combo in their hand. not So, I wouldn't say they are insanely wide over there. Although, uh, like Sky said, the sample is not big enough to determine that. But uh, this does come into... Uh, you know a decent button range probably even can qualify in a tighter button range will obviously exist in a loser button range but the way it is played is definitely uh, interesting ace king ace four that just kind of played cautiously post flop i mean it's it's possible those are in his range right here so but seeing this now yeah i think i possibly missed out on the Ace queen off is uh, not necessarily a three bet pre flop. So, yeah, this is an interesting point. In, uh, in tournament world, or at least, at least in the three bet videos that I have uh, come across, I've studied until now, ace queen off is three bet versus ace queen suited is usually a call because it flops so well. It has, uh, uh, you know, uh, the possibility to uh, more draws as compared to ace queen off, namely flush. <laughs> but in this case especially in sky's uh, ranging ace queen of is not a three bit hand in his uh, assumed condensed uh, you know tight range in our case however we have uh, excluded ace queen of as you can see from my uh, screen because that's how we play and uh, I always try and adjust my three betting range uh, into this hand rating analysis to see uh, what we are missing uh, in in these instances. I do understand that these are just outcomes, these are just results, but we would like to understand by putting a screen off in our three bet and a screen suited in our call range, are we actually uh, gaining or uh, losing out on anything? Uh, is it playing uh, considerably differently in these spots where we face check raises and stuff? Is it good to have ace queen suited in our calling range versus certain players uh, as compared to ace queen off in our calling range? Is uh, is absolutely uh, interesting.
<laughs> as is every small value bet. I could have gone for thin value with like six or seven dollars with my top pair, top kicker. Yeah, um, but but we don't know that uh, unless we have a showdown with them. But as we have a showdown with them, we probably can do that again next time. We don't know if they uh, have made a note on us, if they believe us more uh, on the check raises. On double check raises, probably next time they'll be a lot more cautious and fold to a check, second check raise. Um, versus right. his top pair weak kicker right here. Yep, so let's make a note of this right here. Missed a thin river value bet with top pair, top kicker versus top pair, weak kicker. And I think... He would have called. All righty. Well, hey, I'm happy that we were accurate with the ace-queen. That's pretty sweet. And I'm happy that I found a, a double check raising hand. That nice. is awesome as well. Um, I remember back in the day, what was it? I saw I saw like an article from somebody somewhere. And, uh, you know, they were talking about, I can't remember what it was called, but they, they gave um, like a trophy or an achievement. That's what it was. Some kind of an achievement to people who check raise three streets. And I doubt I've ever done that. Um, but that would be a pretty cool achievement, especially if you're going for value versus a super fishy player that might bet three streets with like top pair, top kicker, and you have a set. Check, raise, check, raise, check, raise. That would be awesome. One of these days, one of these days, I'll get that. But as you can see, when we're looking at PG4 here, um, there's that check, raise, check, raise hand. Pretty yes. awesome. So let me tag this hand with my 66 days tag. I think I have to hit refresh. Nope, nope, it popped up right then. <laughs> All right. Somewhere down That's super here. interesting. Check, race, check, call. There it is. Yep, so I made the tag on it, so we don't uh, try to read this one. Ooh, checking it. We might do this hand tomorrow. Check, call, bet, call, check. Awesome, awesome sauce. And uh, this uh, we come to an end to day 20 of 66 days of hand reading. Uh, another thought-provoking uh, question for today is uh, when you are up against a player you haven't played much would you rather uh, there's two options to do on the river let's say you uh, think you are good with uh, 60 to 70 percent of the range that you have taken to the river you beat uh, the player uh, in your head you do like most of their ranges you know you have them dominated or whatever uh, doubt many will even bet two pairs on the river. <laughs> Check this twice. I know, right? Ah. Uh, so, like I was saying, would you rather go for a thin value bet on the river and get called almost all the time? Or would you try and extract the maximum value and at the same time risk taking yourself to the value town by getting, uh, you know, jammed upon on the river because that happens when we are playing with new players you don't have any idea you get you go aggressive on two streets you go for thin value on the river they probably sense weakness and jam uh, with a polar hand probably not probably not air but then what do you do do you make the call because not all of your range beats most of their range uh 60 percent of your range beats 80 percent of their range let's let's just say that you know, you both carry 10 combos to the river. Six of your combos beat eight of their combos, but two of their combos beat all of your combos. So, <laughs> so it's that. Uh, would, you, would you then bet uh, small and risk getting jammed upon or risk getting uh, raised on the river? Or if I would call, would you go for thin value or would you go for like max value that you can get versus an unknown player and what would you do consistently like you do uh, in my opinion i'll share my uh, view of this in my opinion going for thin value versus an unknown player uh, tells us a lot because uh, very likely we are going to see a showdown all right we establish a baseline that a thin value thin sizing of a bet is uh, is value we establish that from our end they call we see a showdown, we see uh, three streets of play from them with a showdown hand. We make some note on them and thereafter we can always go for max value. Uh, 
probably 40% or even 60%, 70%, a little bit like a pot size bed on the river. And then see if they call that with uh, with their good hands, with their bluff catchers or just with, uh, you know, only with their nutted hands. So in my opinion, it makes sense to uh, test the waters, see a showdown uh, with a thin value sizing. Don't go absolute, uh, absolute, you know, um, conservatively dumb, I would say, by just checking it back to them and just, you know, taking the <laughs> taking the pot as it is, uh, you know, so you're basically just playing two streets and the last street doesn't matter type. So don't do that. Uh, but I would say uh, go for thin value and see a showdown, make note, then go for a, a larger size. That's my approach. That way uh, we, uh, we are definitely winning a small pot. We are definitely getting some value on the river and at the same time learning uh, something about the opponent. And establishing, uh, you know, future bet sizings for ourselves in terms of uh, in terms of river play versus that particular player. Uh, all right, that's uh, on that note. Probably will end today's uh, session, which has gone for one hour now. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Hope you smash the tables. Um, all the best. Bye bye.